Hello, everyone. My name is Jameson Spivak, and I'm a senior policy analyst at the Future of Privacy Forum. Today, we'll talk to you about an emerging set of technologies that monitor, measure, and modulate your brain and nervous system called neurobiologies. I also want to talk specifically about how these powerful new tools could be used, the, how they might impact our privacy and safety, and how policymakers, scholars, and advocates around the world are thinking about regulating them. So to start, what are neurotechnologies? Um, neurotechnologies refers to a range of devices uh, that connect the human nervous system to computers, collect and analyze nervous system data, and in some cases, even regulate the body. Uh, while currently they're generally confined to lab and healthcare settings, neurotechnologies are increasingly being developed in the consumer market as well. Um, you may have seen captivating headlines about computers being implanted into the brains of uh, people who are paralyzed and giving them the ability to, to move or to speak or to control things with their mind. Um, and these are really exciting use cases. Uh, in fact, treating or alleviating some of the symptoms of neurological disorders like paralysis or Parkinson's um, are some of the main uh, motivations behind developing these technologies. But neurotechnologies can also uh, measure neural activity for the purposes of increasing productivity, uh, improving sleep, alleviating stress, and other key bodily functions. When we talk about neural data or neurological data, um, we're not just talking about the brain. Um, we're also talking about anything involving the brain, the spinal cord, uh, and the peripheral nervous system, um, which includes the peripheral nerves throughout the body. Uh, your nervous system is responsible for sensing important changes in your environment and transmitting electrical signals uh, between the brain and parts of your body to respond to these changes. Um, so for example, if you touch a hot stove, pain receptors in uh, your skin will send a message to your brain uh, that something isn't right, and the brain will send signals to the uh, muscles in your hand, telling them to move your hand. There are technologies that measure or potentially control the organs of the nervous system are thus dealing with very critical and potentially sensitive information about the body and its relationship to the world around it. Uh, data about our bodies in general uh, can potentially reveal some of our most private information, um, our health conditions, sexual orientation, race, uh, religious beliefs, interests, personality, uh, the list goes on and on. Um, but neural data in particular could provide insight into what bioethicist Nina Farahani calls the final frontier of human privacy, which is the mind. Um, particularly when combined with AI and integrated into consumer products like wearables and uh, smart devices, neurotechnologies could pose a significant privacy risk. Um, so protecting this data is key not only to maintaining our dignity, but also to preventing discriminatory or otherwise powerful uses um, uh, or decisions made on the basis of this sensitive data. Given the sensitive nature of neurotechnologies and neurodata, it's critical that uh, people are protected from any risks that they might raise. Um, so in the US, neurodata uh, generated and shared in the context of a relationship between a healthcare provider and a patient will be covered by the Health Insurance Affordability and Accessibility Act, or HIPAA. Um, in the consumer market, though, where health and wellness technologies are, are growing in popularity, neurodata will be covered by privacy laws to the extent that that neurodata is considered personal data meaning that people in jurisdictions with privacy laws may have some baseline level of protection uh, for this data. But is this enough? Uh, should neuro data be subject to um, heightened protections given its particular sensitivity? Um, this is the approach that lawmakers in Colorado uh, are currently taking. Um, they've introduced a bill uh, that would amend the Colorado Privacy Act and add neuro data, neural data as well as biological data to the law's definition of sensitive data, which is regulated more strictly than merely personal data. Um, and if passed, this would be the first regulation of its kind in the US. Um, as of Friday, the bill has passed the House and now goes to the Senate. Uh, really quickly, outside of the US, Latin America has seen a surge of interest in protecting an emerging collection of alleged rights called neuro rights, uh, which includes the right to mental privacy, uh, in 2021, Chile became the first country to incorporate neuro rights into its constitution, requiring that any technological development affecting mental integrity should be explicitly authorized by law. Uh, other countries in the region are following in Chile's footsteps, 
um, with, for example, Mexico and Brazil in particular, introducing bills uh, current, in their current legislative sessions that protect people's neuro rates. Um, there's also legislative interest in Costa Rica, Colombia, Argentina, and Uruguay um, in amending their constitution or data protection laws to protect neuro rights. Uh, so as technologies collect more data about our bodies and are able to make increasingly granular and sensitive inferences about us, policymakers will uh, continue to seek ways to regulate the data in the companies that access it. Um, so to get a sense of probably where the neurotechnology uh, regulations are heading, particularly neuroprivacy, look to the early movers in the space, um, like Chile and Colorado, to get a sense um, of, of how they might influence uh, forthcoming regulations. Thank you for your time.